Okay, uh, yes, yeah, glad, glad to start the last session. Uh, and thanks for the invitation. Uh, this has been a very wonderful uh, workshop um, and uh, about various kinds of flat bands. So uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about our recent work on uh, Kagami and honeycomb flat bands in Moray grouping. So uh, we have heard a lot about Kagami flat bands in this workshop um, and also Moray. Um, so basically, um, yeah, I'm going to tell you like um, some proposals that you can actually uh, possibly realize this in graphene more systems. So uh, in, in the first part, I'll just very quickly review a little bit twist by graphene, um, which yeah, of course, um, many people have already talked about. So uh, that will be a quick part. Um, but the um, yeah, in the second part, I'll talk about like how to the generic idea how how uh, the past like how we approach uh, to look for honeycomb and Kagami flat bands in um, more uh, These re refers to the uh, type binding models, uh, like people know, uh, which can give you flat bands. And uh, then I will present a very simple example, uh, which is twisted Kakuli uh, grouping um, for realizing Kagami bands. Okay. Um, yeah, I suppose uh, you don't need, quite need much introduction, but here uh, I just want to briefly review, like for monolayer graphene, the low energy physics are Dirac fermions at K and K prime value. Uh, and the important thing here is um, at these two values, uh, the two Dirac fermions carry opposite helicity or uh, sometimes called chirality, um, given by basically the signs of these poly matrices. And in addition, there's a, a two-fold spin degeneracy um, which um, which is always there, okay. And uh, the idea is uh, of twist of these all these more rare stuff is that if you twist twist the two layers or multi layers of graphene or other materials, two dimensional materials, then you form a super lattice. And in this new new uh, uh, landscape of more rare lattice, you can calculate the more rare band structure. Okay. And um, this uh, most studied model. Uh, initially, where interesting things are found is this twist valley graphene model. If you look at just a single um, Dirac valley uh, of, of graphene, so basically this is the um, burning zone of the two layers. And if you have a twist, these two Dirac fermions um, of the two layers are relatively shifted by a momentum Q. And basically that defines this small moray burning zone. And this is the um, most easily understandable way of uh, presenting the model. Uh, basically, I have Dirac fermions with the same chirality from the uh, from two layers, and the interlayer Moray potential, which is periodic in space, uh, give you this periodic potential um, given by uh, this expression here. And here, uh, basically, there are only two parameters important. Um, w zero is the AA stacking hopping, and W one is the AB uh, or BA stacking hoppings. And this remarkable model uh, it was uh, shown uh, in this um, seminal paper uh, by Big Trees and McDonald that at this twist angle 1.05 degree, you have very flat bands. And this is really magic flat band because you tune a little bit away from this angle, then your bandwidth immediately become much larger. And all the bands are spin uh, and valley fourfold degenerates, which you can define as a pseudo spin, and that actually uh, give uh, give many interesting interacting physics um, when you um, yeah when you add the interactions and uh, these flat bands are also topological which are also important for understanding part of their um, physics um, which are called fragile topology okay uh, I would not um, talk about the details but just to present you that there has been many studies of interacting physics in magic angle to spirography uh, because interaction dominates really in the flat bands. Um, people observe correlated insulators, superconductors, and churn insulators. So it's a playground of um, many interesting interacting phases. And um, uh, when you add magnetic fields, people can uh, also resolve um, the Landau, Landau fan physics, which um, um, gave rise to fractional uh, turning insulator states, yeah, initially, actually, in this biography, uh, they are non-zero fields. But in this workshop, we also listened uh, to like Professor Xiaodong Xu's talk. Um, now, in twisted EMDs, they are also re realized. 
So yeah, basically uh, there are strong motivations for searching for all kinds of polar bands. Um, okay, so um, on the other hand, uh, there has been uh, lots of interest in getting Kagami flat bands uh, for various reasons. Actually, before uh, before uh, this bilingual was studied, um, um, a more um, discussed proposal for uh, on, uh, realizing flat band is to go to this Kagami flat bands. Um, basically, if you have a Kagami lattice and nearest neighbor hopping uh, the zero band structure, there is a exactly flat band. And this uh, flat band is because of the uh, frustration of the lattice. So you can write down the local local eigenstate um, which um, which have have the energy of this flat band and that's why it's a flat band so um, there's a less known model um, but also very interesting if you consider honeycomb lattice with px and py orbitals um, and you write down the model yeah, basically this requires some fine tuning if the two orbitals inter orbital and intra orbital uh, hoppings are equal then you also get a get two flat bands, and these two flat bands also have an understanding from geometric frustrations. Okay. So there has been a material um, a search for uh, all these kinds of models. Um, and theoretically, there are also motivations for uh, studying these models, uh, like because you can, um, you can, if you add, add spin or coupling or magnetism in the system, you can get churn bands, and that's um, that's initial some initial uh, original uh, proposals for realizing fractional churning layers. Um, also, uh, the frustration of the lattice um, may enable uh, studies of uh, spin liquids, um, etc. Um, but in real world, uh, so far, people um, haven't really found a ideal um, material for Kagami uh, flat bands. So either your Fermi level is not, not right at the uh, flat bands or you have lots of other bands uh, together with the flat bands. So uh, what really people want is, a, um, is something, uh, a clean model Kagami uh, system. Also, so there, that, that gives uh, some motivations to study Moray, um, Kagami systems in Moray, because in Moray systems, you can also easily tune the densities, uh, electron densities, um, yeah, that's required if you really want to realize some interacting physics here. Um, there has actually been uh, proposals um, of uh, trying to uh, realize Kagami flat bands in twisted um, transition metal dichotinized and some other related systems. Um, but those are more complicated and uh, yeah, basically the model, there are lots of model parameters um, making the model complicated. Also experimentally, uh, so far uh, it hasn't been realized yet either. Um, well, on the other hand, graphene, yeah, graphene is a much cleaner system. So uh, the question we ask is, is it even possible to realize this also in graphene? Yeah, actually, the, um, initially we, we just consider some uh, some proposals. Like this proposal is, um, yeah, originally we tried to look at large angle twisted bilayer graphenes. Um, so the idea is if you twist twist the graphene near some commemorated angle, and you uh, make, yeah, basically at these angles, your lattice is still exactly periodic, um, but if you twist it away a little bit uh, by some angle delta theta, then you can have similar physics as twist by graphene, and uh, we ask what this model is. And it turns out the low energy model is pretty similar to twist by graphene, uh, except uh, this, low, uh, this interlayer hopping more potential uh, changes. Um, yeah, basically there is an additional parameter uh, written here, it's additional angle parameter, and these W0 and W1 are similar to the twist by graphene uh, model. So yeah, just mathematically, it's an interesting generalization of the twist by graphene uh, this Tristan McDonald model. Um, and for, for small angle twist by graphene, this angle is basically zero. But for large angle, for example, if I look at uh, uh, near this commemorative angle, um, 38.2 degree, um, then indeed you also have kind of a, uh, some flat bands. Um, at, at a similarly defined magic angle. Yeah, but it, it hybridizes with higher bands. So this is not, not actually that good. Yeah, so initially we just tried this. Also, this is not an actual, actual, actually practical proposal because yeah, this magic angle is really small. Yeah, but the interesting thing happens if that angle parameter, this angle parameter really depends on some microscopic hopping parameters. 
if this angle can be tuned to pi over two, then the model becomes very interesting. So we call this a hyper magic model. Yeah, it's even more magic uh, than than twist by the in the sense that if you look at if you tune the uh, like the angle to some certain values, this given by this parameter, then uh, you get you get more than seven flat bands uh, simultaneously in the model, and many of these bands, um, yeah, this is the charge neutrality bands, uh, which are you have two bands, but all the other flat bands have the nature of the either Kagami flat bands or honeycomb flat bands. Yeah, basically they're either group of three bands or a group of four bands. Um, okay. So um, yeah, but, but that model, um, the previous proposal is of course not realistic. So we want to um, yeah, just check how, uh, how this model can be realized in other proposals. So uh, it turns out that um, we tried a few um, ways to um, more possibilities. One possibility is to uh, also also have different lattice constants. Yeah, so twist biography, you have the same lattice constant in two layers, but uh, you only have a twist angle. So um, the simplest thing you can try is uh, if you if you um, have a bilayer of a graphene with another material with square root three substrate. Yeah, basically they so of course yeah in general you can't match the lattice constant exactly, so there will be some mismatch and. You can also further twist away from the um, like the thirty degrees. Then in this case, you also form more ray pattern, and uh, you, you can write down the similar model here. Um, so here we, we we treated the substrate potential as as perturbative. Basically, your electron hop to the second layer and then back. So that give you uh, many terms, basically second order um, from second order hoppings, and these second order terms, yeah. So they contribute both the diagonal and off diagonal terms. So here, yeah, so the important thing here is the substrate, because the substrate have a, a square root three larger uh, unit cell, uh, basically your, um, basically the potential couples two graphene values. Yeah, so like this, um, this blue, um, this blue uh, hexagon, uh, sorry, blue um, hexagon is the brilliant zone of the graphene. So the square root three um, potential basically folds the, both the uh, brilliant zone, um, both K and K prime, close to gamma points, and that couples basically the two valleys. So actually, these two two Dirac fermions are from the opposite graphene, graphene valleys. But here, uh, for writing down this model, we actually perform the unit trans inter transformation to flip the chirality. So it looks like the two uh, have the same chirality, um, but actually they, they originate from opposite valleys with opposite chirality. So um, then these potentials, if you, yeah, if you do the flip, do the flip and check this off diagonal term, it looks actually, uh, if you check the matrix element, it looks exactly of the same form as the hypermagic model we, we earlier showed. So that, that's part of the motivation we look at this model. But in addition, there are diagonal terms also that destroys the nice properties there. So uh, as a result, yeah, so just, this is just to mention there are actually lots of materials with roughly square root three um, lattice constant of graphene. Uh, so um, look, so yeah, basically the additional S term would make it more difficult um, to predict what happens. So um, after trying uh, trying different parameters, we find uh, basically if the second order hopping uh, of the substrate come from a two dimensional uh, co irreducible uh, representation at gamma points. Then uh, that's that that seems to work well to give you some non-trivial flat bands. And as as an example, yeah, of course there are still uh, many parameters. Actually, mainly there are two tuning parameters given by the hoppings um, um, between the top layer and the substrate layer. Um, so here I give two examples. Like in this example, this is charge neutrality. You, you you get this perfect. Um, honeycomb uh, flat bands type binding model with these two bands pretty flat. And in this, in, in another parameter here, uh, you, you get the Kagami flat bands um, model. And yeah, here just showing more examples, actually you can also get other type of flat bands uh, when, you, when you look at the whole phase diagram of this, um, yeah, these two parameters given by the hoppings. Um, yeah, for example, you can also realize fragile topological bands. Actually, these bands are fragile topological, which can be shown from their elementary band representations. Um, and yeah, in this case, in this case, actually, yeah, in this case, we 
yeah, this example we, we haven't really understood. They look like uh, look like Kagami bands, but actually their EDRs are on triangular lattices. So um, yeah, really some some interesting interesting new kinds of flat bands going on here. And if you add spin up coupling in a substrate, uh, which is typical if you uh, yeah, have heavier elements, uh, then the spin up coupling with the spin up coupling to the leading order, uh, because it's like a gamma points, spin SZ is still conserved. So uh, in this case, you can define spin turn number and all these bands split into, um, yeah, the, the gap opens here. They, they become spin turn <coughs> bands. And uh, yeah, basically you can get spin turn number up to three. And this is, a, yeah, just to mention there, we've tried actually another, try to think about another proposal. Yeah, this proposal is actually more ideal, but also much more difficult. So uh, in this in this proposal, if you have if you have another another layer of uh, material which which is graphene like, it means it also have the rock cones and it has similar lattice constants. Yeah, basically just mismatch by some uh, by some small value. Um, then uh, this model actually is nice. Actually, the diagonal terms are just constants, and uh, you you get exactly the hypermagic model, uh, except that the requirement is. Uh, the two layers uh, should have opposite microscopic hoppings, uh, which is very difficult. So uh, yeah, just to mention this, but um, I don't know any material candidates for this proposal yet. Yeah, so then we, we think uh, if Kaguli order is, yeah, Kaguli order is basically the square root three order. If, uh, if the square root three is such an important thing, then why don't we just introduce uh, Kaguli order directly in group B? And, um, Yeah, and uh, earlier uh, Andrea actually talked about uh, this possibility that uh, of inducing Kakuri order in graphene. So if you add lithium atoms, uh, add atoms to graphene, uh, they naturally give you um, Kakuri order. Basically, the lithium atoms they they favor sitting on this um, screw three positions, and also actually um, actually um, Andrea uh, talked uh, mentioned that their their work is even more remarkable that you only need. 0.3% of uh, lithium atoms, then you can use the long range uh, Kakuli order in graphene. And this um, this magnitude of graphene uh, um, Kakuli order is pretty large. Um, yeah, there has been other proposals like also inducing uh, Kakuli orders in graphene, but they are of different type. Yeah, so actually the lithium atom uh, induces a Kakuli order, which is called O order, uh, which says these six bonds uh, become stronger, for example. And uh, there's also the Kakuli Y order, so these two are different. So the Kakuli O order would open a gap at the right points. Um, but the Kakuli Y order actually, uh, the band structure remains gapless. And what we find is uh, Kakuli O order is what we want. Uh, that, that can give us interesting physics. If you have Kakuli O orders um, for P. Yeah, also, also, yeah, of course, the add, on, add atoms could charge the um, Kakuli graphene, but, um, but with, if, if we can really realize 0.3% of lithium atom um, doping, that's, uh, that doping level can be ignored. Yeah, so what we, we calculated is are basically um, two possibilities. Yeah, so this is the original TBG, this biography uh, side view. If you, if you replace one of the layer by um, Kakuli graphene and still do the twist, that's one possibility. Also, you could do just uh, two layers of Kakuli graphene and uh, see what happens. And the model is uh, just pretty simple. It's again, just a simple modification of the TBG Fitzgerald McDonald model. But now you need to take into account both values because the Kakuli order both the uh, K and K prime back to gamma points uh, of the graphene brilliant zone and the couple is the two values. So the coupling are simply a mass term, basically a mass term can be here and here. Um, okay. So yeah, so in the case, if only one layer has Kakuli order, I, I would have only one non-zero mass term, the other is being uh, zero. Okay, so um, yeah, so basically um, the rest parameters are just the same. So we first look at this um, one layer of Kakuli with another, yeah, one layer, one layer being Kakuli grouping, the other layer being the normal grouping. 
So uh, in this case, yeah, we just take the value of um, mass term, which is around the experimental value, the experimentally measured value, um, and and so there is a magic angle, like, uh, but it's it's smaller. It's at 0.7 uh, degree. Uh, you get you get this perfect flat bands uh, of the honeycomb honeycomb type binding model type. And you can look at the um, yeah. So this is uh, basically the comparison with the type binding model. They look pretty similar. And this is the a map of the bandwidth. Yeah, basically, these red points are where the bands are really flat. And in real space, in real space, the one-year orbitals actually, where this is a charge density of the bands, they're localized at the AA stacking positions. Yeah, that can be uh, roughly understood from the TBG case. Actually, in TBG, uh, your um, if you look at the charge density, they are also localized at AA positions. But actually, it should be honeycomb model. So, so, so the one-year center should really be at at these honeycomb positions. So this this shows basically the um, um, one year optos should also take such a shape, which was also proposed earlier in TBG. But in this case, yeah, basically because the two values are coupled, this is a non topological so you can really write down the type binding model uh, on a honeycomb lattice. And uh, in this in this twisted bilayer Kakuri uh, O outer graphene case, uh, it's even more more interesting. So uh, in this case, you yeah, you you, you if you just twist the, the two two layers about one degree, you really get two, two groups of uh, Kagami bands near charge neutrality. Yeah, so this group and this group. So in this case, in this case, actually, um, you can show the moray brain zone also become um, one third smaller than the uh, TBG case. It also couples the two, uh, two groups of flat bands, uh, which are four bands in, in TBG. So altogether, basically these four bands folds into, downfolds into 12 bands. So that's the uh, lowest uh, lowest twelve bands shown here, yeah, like like here. So basically, all these twelve bands, yeah, most of these twelve bands are flat. Yeah, you have this Kagami flat band here. Also, these um, yeah, let me show the um, figure here. Yeah, so the, these two group bands are um, basically forming a two orbital triangular lattice model, and this one this one is a one orbital triangular lattice model. So these are of course trivial, but um, but it turns out the bandwidths are also very small. And in this case, uh, because especially like for this Kagami flat band, uh, the interesting thing is uh, it's uh, the bandwidth is pretty flat over a, a wide range of parameters. That's because the Kagami flat band, the reason it's flat is really because of geometric frustration. So it's in this case you don't need to control the angle so precisely, uh, like in this range of. In this range, uh, entire range of the uh, angle parameter, it's all always pretty pretty flat. Okay, with that, I, I think I um, just conclude my talk and um, yeah, basically we show the possibilities. And let me thank the uh, these are my students, Michael Sher and uh, Kai Gu, who uh, did these works. Um, and thank you for questions. Any questions? Yes. Has there been any um, realistic, uh, let's say, real materials that are considered mm -hmm. to realize those models? Uh, yes. I, I like for the Kakuli, Kakuli graphene, um, currently the Best proposal is uh, like what Andrea talked about earlier. Uh, you could really use the lithium doped um, uh, graphene. If you can really control the doping level, uh, not to dope the graphene really too much, uh, that's perfect. Actually, the, the magnitude of the Kakuli uh, order in, in that system uh, is exactly the value. Yeah, it, it's around the same order of the value we used. And actually, yeah, it's not quite sensitive to the actual value. So over a wide range of uh, calculate order is always very flat. So for the other proposal, like grouping on uh, uh, square root three, uh, near square root three substrate, uh, yeah, so we are still exploring the, uh, in DFT uh, what is the best, uh, uh, yeah, best material. Um, yeah, but ba basically there is a whole phase diagram. So it's it's quite possible, like you realize, yeah, you realize some type of new flat bands, uh, although they might not be, Exactly the Kagami one, yeah. Because yeah, in the phase diagram we actually have maybe 
like nine phases, nine different phases, nine different types of mm -hmm. um, okay. connected flat bands. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. In your model, suppose there's a strong spell coupling, it will help you or make it worse. If it, if it a was. strong spell coupling, do, uh -huh. do you, like a, you will benefit from that or it will yes. screw up the bands? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. So uh, I briefly showed, I maybe show it too quickly. In the case of Kagami, sorry, in the case of you put a graphene on top of a screw three, um, yeah. Square three uh, lattice constant substrate. Uh, you can, uh, yeah. If you add spin up coupling, they become spin turn bands and they remain pretty flat. It's basically similar to when you add spin up coupling to the Kagami flat band. Uh, in in tight binding model, you also get flat turn bands. And in this case, you yeah, you can. In more rare cases, it's actually that that uh, gave me some difference difference from tight binding model. You, uh, if you like add spin off coupling to uh, the type binding model of uh, Kagami uh, Kagami model, uh, you get turn number being one zero minus one. Uh, that's the typical number. Here, uh, yeah, it depends on where you are in the phase. Uh, you could you could get yeah, like in this case, we we look at uh, you get turn number minus one two and minus one. Yeah, so that's kind of a the spin off coupling is doing something different. So, what is the real space signature of the middle flat band in the twisted bilayer Kagome uh, graphene Kagome graphene case? Oh, the uh, you mean those two? Uh, I think you mean the, the honeycomb, the honeycomb uh, model. Uh, yeah, the, the, the last one. So you you mean the two orbitals have the kind T B K G? Oh, T B K G. Yeah. There are 12 bands, yes. so, um, so it, you're referring to these There's two? one in the middle, is that a band? Oh, this is not, this is dash line, it's the uh, Fermi oh, level, oh, oh, or okay. Chan neutrality, yes. It's still particle symmetric, yeah, the model, the lowest order. Yeah, so in this case, it's pretty um, isolated flat bands, you don't oh. mix with the other bands. And I just quickly, so for the experimental, method to do this so once you put in the lithium dosing to induce the folding and then you can use gating to tune the that's the idea to that's the additional tuning parameter you can yeah i could talk to andrea a little bit it's still very difficult experimentally i think so far because they have to do uh, uh they have to do the deposition in uh, very low temperature um, but then it's hard to do the twist so maybe a more practical idea is you do the twist first and then at least in atom, um, yeah. Hope, hope they still form the calculate order. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.